Hey, it's Chris. Ultra wide monitors can range anywhere from 300 some dollars up to around $1,500. And if you're looking for a really great ultra wide for your M1 Mac or for any Mac really, and you want good performance without breaking the bank, then LG's $600 34-inch QHD ultra wide is definitely worth checking out. Now, in my last home office setup, I had LG's 49-inch super ultra wide set up on the desk, and when we moved, it met with an unfortunate accident. It's no longer with us. Actually, it's with Best Buy because I paid them to recycle it. But long story short, I got really used to that ultra wide life. And you can see as I designed this new office space, I definitely left some room there on the desk, on the wall for a new ultra wide to slot right in. Now, the one I've got in my hands on to test here is the LG 34WN780, which has a 21 to 9 aspect ratio, can display 4K HDR content, and has a unique ergonomic arm that lets you swivel and rotate the monitor into just about any position you want. And just so you know, LG did send this my way, but this is not a sponsored video. So all the opinions are purely, honestly, my own. Nobody pays for my opinions ever. Transparency. Let's talk about how I use this. The reason I like ultra wides in the first place is because I can see so much of my work at once. Now, LG does have some native screen management software and I prefer to just use something like Magnet from the App Store, which has great keyboard shortcuts for managing window placement. Ah, I know there's free alternatives, but you can use those, I'm just using Magnet. When I'm editing a video in Final Cut Pro, it's great to see so much of my timeline on this 34 inch display. And I vastly prefer editing and doing lots of my work on an ultra wide like this versus a 27 inch display. Remember Genie from Aladdin, itty bitty living space? That's what a 27 inch feels like after you've been living with an ultra wide. Now, when it comes time to write or research or browse the web, I do like to have two or three apps showing at once. Maybe my web browser taking up two thirds of the screen and my notes taking up a third. And if I really need to, I can definitely use three apps here at a time. The only time that a three-way split kind of feels a little bit constrained is when one of those windows is a web browser. But you know what? I'd rather be able to have three things on the screen pretty comfortably than to just have to focus on one or maybe two. So it's workable. Also, as you can see, I am using Sidecar with my iPad Pro here, but let's be honest, I'm always gonna use Sidecar. I mean, I use Sidecar with the 49 inch super ultra wide. I just like screen real estate. The 4K resolution, well, QHD to be exact, surprised me by how nice it actually looked compared to the resolution of my 49 inch. My video footage looks super nice and crispy, and it's been a really nice experience for editing video professionally. And same thing with running Lightroom and Photoshop for photo editing and for thumbnail creation. Sure, it's not 5K, but the QHD resolution is plenty for picking out the details when I'm doing photo editing and even for video stuff. There was a noticeable difference the second I loaded up a video and watched it on my Final Cut timeline versus the 49 inch. Now, at this point, let me just say, Get yourself subscribed because LG told me that they're gonna be sending along their flagship 5K 40 inch display that debuted at CES. So I'm gonna be able to compare that one to this one to my old one and really give you guys a good idea where you wanna land in terms of budget and spending. But this is an HDR monitor and the HDR content actually does look really nice. The only thing is I just wish that the screen could get brighter than it does. So if you just look at it and you don't have any other screens around like a MacBook screen or your iPad screen, then you wouldn't think twice about it. But since I'm using Sidecar and for a while I had my MacBook popped open, so I had three screens going on, I could just tell when it was sandwiched between my two Apple devices that the screen was a little darker than I would like. But let me just say this, in no way is that a deal breaker. Again, if you don't have any other screens going to compare to, then it just looks great. I mean, this screen is $600. Of course, it's not top of the line, but for 600 bucks, it's really nice. And speaking of nice, I really like how much room I have underneath the monitor because there's no traditional monitor stand. So my desk just feels like it has so much more room, which is awesome because not only does my setup feel less cluttered, but it's more functional because I can store stuff underneath like my headphones or a camera. 
or some coffee, for instance. Now, I do think it's cool that the monitor arm can rotate and swivel all over the place, but in reality, I'm just gonna be using it in its more traditional horizontal mode, but it's really nice to be able to dial in my exact ergonomic comfort level in terms of where my neck and my face and eyes are all pointing. So that's a bigger deal for me than being able to swivel it around to share work with a coworker or something or turn it vertical. Some people are gonna love that. But for me, I'm just pretty traditional and straightforward. And honestly, when it comes down to it, wouldn't you rather have a monitor that adapts to you and how you want to be positioned versus you having to adapt to your monitor and how it's positioned? I mean, it's great to have that option. I mean, it really does feel more luxurious than just plopping your display down on a stand and being more limited in terms of height and angle adjustments. And if you're a stickler about cord management, then this monitor arm is gonna be your best friend because it keeps things nice and tucked away, clean and organized. So good cable management and the hovering monitor effect definitely evoke a pretty stunning aesthetic. And as you can see, the bezels really aren't bad here, which contributes to just an overall good look for the monitor. So if one of your goals is to get something that looks really good at your desk, I really don't think you're gonna be disappointed. So no, this isn't a curved display, but it really doesn't need to be. If it was any longer than 34 inches, then I might say, you know what? Let's stick a curve in there. That might be better. But as it is, I'm really not struggling with it. I've never thought to myself, oh, I wish that this was curved. No, I've thought, let's get some work done. This is nice. If you're wondering about glare, I do have a window off to the right of my desk, which can be problematic with glare on certain screens. But I have to say it hasn't been a glaring issue here. <laughs> I mean, with this setup and in this price point, I'm not gonna be completely glare free, but it certainly hasn't sunk the experience for me, not even close. So a couple disappointments for me included the speaker and the power output for charging my Mac. I do wish that the speakers were a little bit more robust, and also I wish that the charging options were just a bit more optimized. I mean, you can see the connectivity options on the back here, and if that works for you, then great. So, to wrap this up, I moved. My old ultra-wide bit the dust. And then for a while there, I was just using my MacBook Pro, all by itself, kind of lonely there on the desk, which in a way was kind of nice. It was really minimal, but I did feel like I was missing out productivity-wise. So I was really anticipating getting a new screen of some sort. When I got it, the second I turned it on, I saw that really nice 4K resolution. It was kind of like getting reintroduced to an old friend instantly. It was like, all right, I'm back in the flow, and I did feel more productive. All of a sudden, I was looking forward to coming and sitting here at the desk and digging into my work. There's something about the headspace with an ultra wide and being able to, it's really not about multitask. I feel like I'm actually single tasking when I'm using this. It's just that I can pull from more sources more easily when I have an ultra wide. And yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is it feels good. And it wouldn't feel good if the monitor itself was bad in ways that were deal breakers. It's just not. So if you want something that's better than what you're gonna get for 300 bucks, and if you don't really wanna max out and go with a huge 49 inch at the 1500-ish dollar price point, and you're looking at something kinda in the, in the middle that's gonna provide a lot of performance and look really nice without breaking the bank, you know what? I would recommend this. It's really nice. So if you're like me and 27 inches it just really isn't enough screen real estate to accomplish what you need to accomplish, or it just feels a little claustrophobic for what your kind of work is, then this is definitely something to investigate. I feel like the price is pretty fair for what you get. And what I'm gonna do is leave a link down in the description. It's an affiliate link, FYI. I'm putting it there so you can check the latest prices, depending on when you watch this, and see if it's right for you. That's it for this video, and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Later.